It's an undeniable fact that the Fallout universe is pretty weird. However, there are some elements of its lore, in-game locations and characters that are so bizarre, fascinating and intriguing that they need to be seen to be believed. So let's take a look at some of Fallout's weirdest lore. For most of its timeline, the Fallout universe mirrors our own reality quite closely. However, following the end of World War II in 1945, our history begins to quickly diverge. For example, their United States consolidated itself into 13 commonwealths, rather than 50 states, and they sent a cat into space rather than a monkey. However, the most important single change between our two realities is the invention of this simple little device, the transistor. In our reality, it was created in 1947 and became the fundamental building block for modern electronic devices, paving the way for smaller and cheaper radios, calculators and computers. However, this never happened in the Fallout universe, and the butterfly effect of this small change impacted the entire game's history. Where we became focused on the miniaturization of tech and making things cheaper to produce, they instead focused on further harnessing the power of the atom, which is why you can find things like cars that were powered by fusion engines. It's also why you still see things like vacuum tubes on radios, or large mainframe computers that rely on what even today we would consider to be outdated tech, but they were still using up until the Great War in 2077. This tiny little change has had more impact on the world of Fallout than anything else in the game's lore. It changed everything, from the visual aesthetic to the reliance and further development of atomic technology, the same tech that would eventually result in the destruction of civilization. In the original Fallout, there is a holodisc found in the GLOW research facility that talks about a series of experiments being performed with the forced evolutionary virus. One of these talks about testing on flatworms, and another on mice. However, the most interesting part is about an experiment on 53 raccoons that cause them to increase in size, intelligence, and manual dexterity. However, it also mentions that four of the subjects escaped from the lab. Reportedly, these raccoons then headed north and settled down in an oasis which became known as the Burrows. Over time, they became skilled hunters and their intelligence continued to grow, eventually calling themselves the Tribe of the Salanta. As a part of their escape, they had also stolen some documents, and within these notes, the leader of the Salanta learned about their creation and eventually founded a religion around worshipping the scientists as gods. Now, unfortunately, the Burrows and the Raccoon people were cut from the final release of the game for not feeling Fallout-like and being too work-intensive to design unique equipment for, meaning they are not officially canon. However, the holodisc referring to their creation did make it into the game, and other details about their existence have also been discussed by developers. So, as far as we know, they are still out there somewhere in New California. Weirdly enough, Although the talking raccoons were too strange for Fallout to include, they were quite happy to have Brain, an intelligent albino mole rat who plans on taking over the world. Brain can be found in the ghoul town of Gecko, and although he's clearly a reference to the cartoon mouse of the same name, he's still canon in the universe. There are also other examples of creatures gaining heightened levels of intelligence and communication, such as in Fallout 2, where you can speak to a type of intelligent deathclaw that were being experimented on by the Enclave. Although they're not quite as bright as Brain, and have far less lofty ambitions than world domination, this is still another example of why I think the Salanta are probably still out there somewhere. The latest Fallout installment also opened the door for some very strange creatures, and the canonical existence of a number of mysterious entities from West Virginia folklore, such as the Mothman. In Fallout 76, you can find evidence that a group called the Cult of the Mothman performed a ritual to summon it the day before the Great War, and now this winged beast can be spotted lurking in Appalachia. The Grafton Monster is another popular myth from the area in our world. However, in the Fallout universe, it became reality, thanks to FEV experimentation on humans. There is also what appears to be an alien being called the Flatwoods Monster, who also has its origins in real-life local stories, where the legend says that a group of friends encountered the alien creature after investigating a light that flew across the sky and landed in the woods. But of course, this is far from the only alien in the Fallout universe. No doubt many of you will be familiar with the Mothership Zeta in Fallout 3, or the Crash Ship in Fallout 4. But there are also some much earlier examples of alien influence on the game's lore and characters. For example, alien technology was responsible for the Psychic Nullifier in the original game, a device that could be used to protect its wearer against the paranormal influence of psychers. 
A similar device also reappears in Fallout New Vegas, where it is used by the forecaster to help him control his powers that let him see the future. The Fallout games are heavily based in science and technology. However, if you look closely enough, there are many supernatural and fantasy elements as well. For example, ghosts and evidence of creepy goings on from beyond the grave can be found throughout the series. In Fallout New Vegas, for example, you can hear the whispers of the dead if you lurk near a graveyard. Then in Fallout 2, you can actually meet a ghost called Anna Winslow, who asks you to retrieve her locket. However, the spookiest of all the hauntings has to be the Grantchester House in Fallout 4's Nuka World DLC. Prior to the Great War, the building was being used as a haunted house attraction, and as you make your way through it, you can learn about the life of Lucy Grantchester and her parents. We'll never know for sure how it happened, but he was found with a pair of scissors driven through his eye and into his brain. Lucy claimed she was holding them in self-defense as he tried to beat her with his cane. She said he tripped and fell onto the scissors. When asked why his fingers had all been cut off, she replied that it was so he couldn't hold the cane again. Lucy's mother was found dead in the master bedroom with a cloth doll stuffed in her mouth. Following the double murder of her parents, Lucy was sent to an asylum. However, it wasn't long before she escaped and was later found hanging in the attic of her childhood home. In the years that followed, the house was transformed into a tourist attraction. However, the ghost of Lucy remains, running through the fake doors and up the staircases of this bizarre home. <laughs> Big Mountain was the setting for the Fallout New Vegas add-on Old World Blues, and also contained some of the weirdest elements of Fallout's history. The Big MT Research and Development Center was originally built to create the technology of tomorrow, without the moral restraints of today holding the scientists and the engineers back. As a result, they began to create things like the Trauma Harness, a device designed to help wounded soldiers get back to safety by taking control of their body's movement for them. However, these suits were experimental, and test subjects became trapped inside and forced to suffer a slow, agonizing death as the suit forced them to keep moving. But it didn't stop there, as the suits were unable to tell if the person inside was alive or dead, essentially becoming walking coffins that would continue to carry around the bones of their original users for centuries. They also created monstrosities like the Night Stalker, a mixture of Rattlesnake and Coyote, or the Cazador, a giant Tarantula Hawk Spider Wasp. But this was just the kind of work they were doing before the war. In the wake of the bombs dropping, they got even crazier, and decided to preserve the six executives of the facility by placing their brains inside robot chassis. And are those penises I see wriggling on its feet? Disgusting. I believe those are toes, Dr. Klein. They then ended up doing things like creating a poisonous gas leak and then providing 40 hazmat suits for the construction workers operating within the cloud. The locks on these suits would corrode when in use, before eventually locking the victims of their experiments inside where they mutated into the so-called ghost people. Oh, and they also removed the player character's brain. Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. Now, any good list about Fallout's weirdest and most often disturbing elements would not be complete without bringing up the story of Dunwich. First appearing in Fallout 3, those who ventured into the Dunwich building would be haunted by hallucinations, before eventually coming across an altar to a being called Ugkuloth in the Underchambers. The altar, as well as its placement in the Dunwich building, and its worship by the Swamp Folk in the Point Lookout DLC, are all references to the HP Lovecraft story, The Dunwich Horror. However, in Fallout's universe, it appears to be fact rather than fiction. Dunwich reappears in Fallout 4 as the Dunwich Borrows, a quarry where you will suffer similar hallucinations and uncover a creepy shrine deep underground, below which you can find a pool of irradiated water and the partially revealed face of a large, silvery statue. Both locations are also accompanied by stories of people being driven insane, as these disturbing eldritch horrors appear to speak to those nearby. I could kill them all. No. No, that, would, that wouldn't be what it would want. It's time to 
lay down. Yes, of course. It's next to my bed. I will. It's loaded. Finally, we need to talk about the single weirdest character in all of Fallout history, Harold. He was once a human child, living in Vault 29, before being contaminated with the forced evolutionary virus. However, unlike most other humans, it didn't turn him into a super mutant. Instead, he just became what looked like an ordinary ghoul, as seen in the original Fallout. However, by Fallout 2, he had sprouted a small tree at the top of his head, and by the time Fallout 3 rolls around, he has been entirely overwhelmed by the plant and rooted into the ground. It wasn't long before people began to worship him as some kind of god, and an entire town was built around him. Bob, which is what Harold had named the tree, began to blossom, and plants grew around him, forming an oasis. He is without a doubt the most unique person in all of Fallout, and you could certainly argue, also the weirdest. The name's Harold. Are there any other weird pieces of lore, characters or locations that you love in Fallout? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I've been James from Fandom, and thank you for watching. Get the spray before it excretes all over everything. <laughs>